provided a, a great, exciting, entertaining uh, basketball game to get involved in, and they certainly did. I thought uh, Florida State played great. They shot 60% from the field, 47% um, from three. They out-rebounded us. Uh, they had 16 assists and only seven turnovers. We had 17 assists and only seven turnovers. We shot 17 to 34 from three, probably the most threes we've taken since I've been at Miami, but we were making them. DJ had a great game off the bench and uh, went into overtime. We had a chance. We had the last possession of regular season, of, of the regulation and just didn't, wasn't able to come up with that, that bucket right there. And then they had a chance with five seconds to go. Uh, they were not able to score. So a uh, very entertaining game, and I thought both teams played well. Jim, in this league, how, how balanced is this league that any team on any night can win and knock off somebody that's won? I, I can tell you our last, what, four games? Can't remember back even for, well, I think even, who did we play before uh, Duke? Clemson? Yeah. Every conference game has been incredibly competitive at the end of the game. Oh, we lost at Clemson. I thought they played great. We had Duke on the ropes but couldn't finish. They, they finished strong and Gary Trent Jr. was phenomenal. Um, we went on the road and played great at NC State and won in a barn burner. Then we won in overtime on Wednesday and losing overtime on Saturdays. The league has so many talented, gifted players. Well, we've got a bunch, but so does everybody else. Coach, you said that uh, this is probably the most threes you guys have ever shot since you've been in Miami. Um, because it was falling, were you calling plays or trying to organize the offense so that you could shoot more threes? <laughs> yeah, I was saying throw it to DJ. <laughs> no, it's, in the game, when the game started, their defense was so pressure packed, they were closing out so fast that I would say in the first three timeouts, I just kept emphasizing for our guys to shot fake. Just keep shot faking because they'll jump and we can get a better shot. And uh, when, when a team is as long and as athletic as, as Florida State, even if, if they close out and, and you you get an open look, it's hard to make it because the next guy is coming. But once we started making them, and I stuck with the guys who were making shots, DJ was six for 10, uh, Lonnie Walker four for eight, Anthony Lawrence four for six, Joe Kwan Newton one for one, and Sam Wardenberg one for one. So you know, we shot, shot the ball uh, really well, and uh, it kept us in it, but we couldn't stop them. They shot the ball extremely well, and. They have a lot of weapons. I mean, you, you look at, at their scoring, they had one, two, three, four, five, six guys in double figures, and the lowest guy was at 13. Oh, well, sometimes that's your leading score. DJ, can you talk about your game tonight? Uh, you had the hot hand, six three-pointers. Talk about uh, being in the zone and just being in the right place at the right time. I mean, I believe I had a good shoot around this morning. I uh, got myself mentally prepared for the game. Obviously, Coach, I believed in me to make shots, and I did, and my teammates found me, so, yeah, I think I was in a good game. DJ, Coach talked about the OT game Wednesday, OT again today. How much do you think those extra 10 minutes really wore on your team in those final minutes and in overtime? I mean, you just got to be prepared. Uh, Coach L emphasizes it's either play 40 minutes or however long it takes, and it doesn't matter. You just got to take care of your body, and I think our guys do a tremendous job of doing that. It's just, I mean, we lost tonight. That's what we just got to move forward, watch tape, and, you know, get more recovery. Coach, was that uh, on the final possession there where it was sort of a, you know, ISO opportunity for Lonnie? Was that the primary option? Was he the primary? He Actually, was I was getting ready to call a timeout, and my players waved me off. They felt like they, they had a, a good option. I didn't know what they were thinking, but I trust them. We got the ball to Lonnie the last game. He made some incredible shots at the end and helped us get to overtime. And he got a great shot. It was a little bit short, but, uh, you know, I felt good when it left his hands. And then coming back on the other side, obviously Lonnie had the block. Did you anticipate that you know, Angola was going to be the guy they were trying to get the ball to? Or was that just a great Well, they have so Lonnie? many options, but yes, we think Angola is, is one of the primaries. And 
Five seconds left, I thought we defended it pretty darn well. And Lonnie stuck with his man and got, got the shot uh, blocked because he was uh, in such great defensive position the whole five seconds. You know, five seconds doesn't seem like a lot of time, but for a player like Angola, he can shake loose. And Lonnie didn't, didn't let him. He, he really stuck with him well. Jim, have you ever been in a game where you or another team made 17 three pointers and lost? Who are you asking? You. Oh, me? Yeah. Have I ever been in a game where we've made 17 threes? Or are you coach against a team that's made 17 threes and lost? Coached a lot of games. I, I, I don't really know the uh, record. That does seem like a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, they made nine, and I thought that was a lot. They had six at halftime, and we really try to emphasize not to get another six or seven. But we were. What, what uh, Coach Hamilton did is is early in the second half he switched to a zone, and Gumaji just hangs around the basket, so it's really hard to get an interior basket. So we try to create some three-point looks. And uh, I, I thought, you know, 17 assists and only seven turnovers. You know, we, we got a lot of good looks and, and made the shot. Coach.